I've never liked the conditional formatting that's built into Power BI. It's really confusing, but check this out. You can use a measure, and, and thanks to Brian from one of my recent videos, he, he, made a, he made a comment in the video saying, you can use measures, and it is a great tip. So check this out, right? I've got conditional formatting here, here. I've got conditional formatting here. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just come into this measure and maybe change the color of all of them to this one, press enter, and everything changes in one hit. I'll show you how, let's go. So I've set up two base measures, color red with this hex code and color green with this hex code. Okay, where do you find those codes? Well, you could simply go to view and then the drop down and customize current theme. And under here, you can find the hex codes. And if you move these things around, you find out the hex codes. Okay, so that's one way. Personally, I use color picker. So that's a, a part of Power Toys. Okay, you can download Power Toys. It's a Microsoft product. Um, it's free. And for me, I just do Windows Shift C and I get this little color picker, which I can just hover over things and get the different colors of all the different items. Okay, and let's say I wanted this yellow, I could just click and then the color picker tool pops up and here's my colors which I can use. I'll put a link to color picker in the description below. All right, so that's how I get my colors. So then what do I do? Well, I've actually set up a conditional formatting rule. So here I've got the name of the rule, usage versus prior year, that's the measure I'm evaluating. So that's my variance measure, essentially. I've already got that set up. And then this pattern is the same for all future measures. It's just saying, hey, if it's greater than naught, then red. If it's less than zero, then green. And again, you can swap those arrows around dependent on you know, whether you're doing something good if it's positive or bad if it's positive. So that pattern stays the same. It's just this measure you swap out. I did another one here, conditional formatting for demo difference. See, it's exactly the same, except it's just swap that out. And I've also got slightly different rules there, the less than or greater than. And that's essentially it. So then if I go, let me go and show you, if I go into this card visual, or this demo difference visual, if I go to the, let's go to the call out value, and I come down here, let me just clear the formatting. Right, so I come call out value, show in black. I click the FX. This is the you know default gradient, which is awful. Well, not awful, but it's not that practical for most things. Then we've got the rules, and this is awful. You know, if it's less than zero, oh wait, there is no less than, which is really awkward. Um, so that's clunky. You've got to get around here and say new rule. You just have to know that you ignore this min. And then for this one, you've got to change it to a, you know, you change it to zero. And then you've got to change this one to a max. It's just clunky. So rather than doing that, because we've set up those little measures, we can come here and I've put it in a, a folder called Z conditional formatting or I can search for CF because I've begun all my conditional formatting rules with CF. And I can just pick this one. And rather than rules, I just pick field value. Okay, so field value rule. And I can click OK. And there we go, it applies the conditional formatting, which is great. I can do the same thing here. I go into here, I click on the actual um, item down here, conditional formatting, background color, and I set up a field value. Okay, CF rule, demo difference, and actually values and totals, and therefore it would you know show for the grand total as well. 
And say I decided I actually want I want my any zeros to be have a light grey background or something like that. Well, I could come into here, you know, the conditional formatting for the demo difference. It's just more obvious. And rather than returning blank, I could say, um, let's go a different color. Or I could go color neutral. So I'd come in here, write a new measure, right click new measure. Okay. Color neutral equals. And then I want to pick a color, so I'm going to go Windows Shift C because I've got color picker. That'll do that gray. Click on that, copy that, come in here, put that in there. Okay, that's my, oh, I've got to put the hash in there. Okay, don't forget to put the hash in. Um, okay, and then I can just come down to my conditional formatting and I can say otherwise square bracket, color neutral. Click the tick, and it's much easier to control it and be more sort of, you know, global about your decisions. See the zeros are now gray. Okay, and let's see this in action. So, you know, this is above, this is below. See the negatives going green? This is below, this one's above. And I can even add that rule to this chart. So if we go, um, for the paintbrush and the columns, the color FX, change this to field value, search for CF, for, against prior year variants, click OK. And now you see all the ones that are above and all the ones that are below. Not saying you should necessarily do that for that sort of chart, but just showing you the concept. All right, let me know what you think. Are you already using this? Do you think this is useful? Um, are there any traps or pitfalls that people should be aware of? And I always encourage people to look in the description because as people leave comments, I tend to add those sort of really useful comments into the description or put updates in there. So always check out the description as well. Let people know about this channel and I'll catch you in the next video.